As a dedicated listener of the HIVRNA Test Guide podcast, you're clearly someone who understands uh, the importance of staying informed about HIV. Absolutely. And with access to, what, over 4,500 testing labs across the U.S., you're definitely proactive about your health. That network is crucial. But what if we told you about a, well, a completely different approach to HIV treatment, one that could maybe change the daily reality of managing the virus? Mm Mm-hmm potential game changer. Let's dive into the story of AGT-103T. Yeah, let's do it. We're going to take a close look at AGT-103T. It's this really fascinating gene therapy. Um, It's aiming for a future where HIV might be controlled by your own body. Rather than solely relying on daily medication. Exactly. That's the core idea. So, okay, in simple terms then, what's the big idea behind AGT-103T? What's it trying to achieve? The goal is something they call a functional cure. Now think of it like this. Instead of just suppressing HIV with drugs every single day, AGT-103T aims to kind of boost your immune system. Boost it how? So it can naturally keep the virus in check, you know, on its own. This could mean a really significant reduction, or maybe even getting rid of the need for daily antiretroviral therapy, RT. Wow. That's a fundamentally different strategy compared to, well, how we currently manage HIV. Okay, the potential for yeah. for not having that daily burden of medication thinking about it. That sounds like a huge shift for people living with HIV. It really could be. Mm-hmm. I mean, just imagine the improvement in quality of life. Long-term remission achieved through your own body's control. That's, that's the dream for many. Now, who is developing this, this innovative approach? Yeah. Who's behind AGT-103DT? So the therapy is being developed by a company called Adimune. Adimune, okay. Yeah. Now, you might have actually heard their previous name, which was American Gene Technologies, or AGT. They sort of rebranded to Adimune as their work progressed. Right. AGT, I remember that name. So Adimune is the one to watch now. Mm. Okay. Can you give us sort of a simplified overview of how AGT-103T actually works inside the body? Sure. So essentially, AGT-103T is all about strengthening the patient's own immune response. The process uh, involves a few key steps. Okay. First, doctors collect CD4 plus T cells. These are, you know, vital immune cells. Once HIV targets, right. right. Precisely. The primary target, unfortunately. So they collect these directly from the patient's blood. So it all starts with a standard blood draw, something many of our listeners will be familiar with from their regular HIV testing. Exactly right. Once these T cells are collected, they undergo this really crucial modification step in the lab. Mm -hmm. This modification is specifically designed to make these cells resistant to HIV replication. Think of it as, I don't know, giving your immune cells a genetic upgrade. A genetic upgrade. Okay. And after these uh, enhanced T cells are created, what happens next? These genetically modified cells are then infused back into the patient. Right back in. Yep. And the idea is that these newly fortified T cells will multiply and hopefully be able to control HIV within the body, ideally without the ongoing need for daily RT. So it's not just about keeping the virus numbers low with medication, which is what RT does. It's about the body actually learning to manage HIV itself. That's exactly it. AGT-103T aims to go beyond just suppression. The goal is really to empower the body to fight the virus naturally and, you know, potentially achieve a lasting remission from within. That is fascinating. Okay, let's dig a little deeper into the science then. You mentioned CD4 plus T cells being extracted. Why are these particular cells so critical in the whole HIV picture? Right. So CD4 plus T cells are kind of like the the generals of your immune system. They coordinate the body's defense against all sorts of infections, including HIV. But sadly, HIV specifically targets and destroys these very cells, the CD4 plus T cells. And that's what gradually weakens the immune system over time. Right, leading to AIDS if untreated. Exactly. So focusing the therapy on these cells is a really logical strategy if you're aiming to restore the immune system's control over HIV. Makes sense. And how do scientists actually, you know, modify these T cells to resist HIV? You mentioned something called a lentiviral vector. Okay, let's unpack this. What is that and how does it work? Sure. So a lentiviral vector is essentially a delivery system. Scientists use a modified virus. In this case, it's based on a lentivirus, which HIV is a type of, but it's heavily modified. Modified how? Safe. Oh, absolutely safe in this context. It's altered, so it absolutely cannot cause illness itself. Its only job is to carry these beneficial genetic instructions into the patient's T cells. It's the therapeutic payload delivery vehicle. So it's like a a specialized mail carrier. Using the virus's natural ability to get into cells, 
but delivering helpful instructions mm -hmm. instead of something harmful. That's a really good analogy, yeah. And the instructions it delivers in AG2103T are in the form of something called a micro or nan or mirna. Mirna. Okay. And this mirna is specifically designed to block several key HIV genes. By basically interfering with these genes, the mirna makes the T cells resistant to HIV infection. The virus just can't effectively replicate inside these modified cells. So the mirna is like a like a blocker. It stops HIV in its tracks within that specific cell. You could think of it like that, or like a molecular switch that just turns off the essential HIV genes within those T cells. So the T cells are essentially being given like a new shield, a defense mechanism, making them immune to HIV's attacks. Precisely. It's like uh, upgrading your immune system with specialized software that's specifically designed to resist HIV. Okay. So after this genetic modification, these strengthened T cells go back into the body what happens then? How do they start controlling the virus? Right. So once they're reinfused, these modified T cells are designed to um, persist, to stick around and multiply within the patient's body. Because they're resistant now. Exactly. Because they are now resistant to HIV, they can function effectively even if the virus is still present at some level. They basically act as a new HIV-resistant part of your immune system. Oh. They're capable of recognizing and suppressing HIV even if the patient stops taking traditional RT. The hope is really for a long-lasting effect from this ideally single intervention. A single treatment with potentially enduring benefits. That sounds incredible. <laughs> now, obviously, getting a therapy like this approved for wider use is a, well, it's a long and complex process, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Very rigorous. Can you outline AGT-103T's journey through the FDA approval stages so far? Where have they gotten? Absolutely. So the process kicked off when the FDA granted approval to proceed with a phase one clinical trial. That was back in August, 2020. Okay. And at that time, the company was still known as American Gene Technologies, AGT. Right, the original name. So that was the initial green light to start testing in people. Exactly. That's the first big step in a human trials. Mm -hmm. Following that, the phase 1A trial actually began in October 2020. Okay, pretty quickly after approval. Yeah. And interestingly, by the time the first participant was enrolled later that same month, October 2020, the company was operating as Adimmune. Ah, uh, so the name change happened right around then. Seems like it. And the first patient actually received the AGT-103T infusion in May 2021, also under the Adimmune name. Okay, so we see that transition happening during that initial trial phase. What were the main findings, the takeaways from that first phase 1A trial? So the phase 1A trial finished up in November 2022, and the findings were uh, very encouraging, particularly from a safety standpoint. Safety first. Always. Importantly, no serious adverse events related to the therapy itself were reported. This showed that AGT-103T seems to have a favorable initial safety profile. That's a critical first hurdle for any new treatment. And these results, uh, they were reported under the American Gene Technologies name, just to note. Okay, that's really reassuring news on the safety front. So what's the next phase then in the clinical trial process for AGT-103TT? Right now in 2024, Adimmune is in the planning stages for what's called a phase 1B trial. Phase 1B, what's the difference? This next phase will likely focus more on evaluating how effective the therapy is at controlling HIV, that's its efficacy, and also trying to figure out the optimal dose to use. Still looking at safety, of course, but with more emphasis on does it work? Okay, so phase one is mainly about safety making sure it doesn't harm people. Yeah. And then phase two and beyond start to really look at how well the treatment actually works. Is that the general idea? That's a good way to summarize it, yeah. The FDA approval system is this very step-by-step -step approach. It's designed to ensure both the safety and the effectiveness of new therapies before they reach the public. Makes sense. It all starts way before human trials with preclinical studies, that's lab work, animal studies, just getting an initial idea of safety and how it might work biologically. And if those early studies look promising? Then the researchers put together a big package called an Investigational New Drug Application, or IND. They submit that to the FDA. Okay. If the FDA reviews all that data and gives the go-ahead, only then can human clinical trials begin. Which brings us to phase one, like AGT-103T completed. What happens after phase one? So following a successful phase one where the safety looks acceptable, the therapy moves into phase two trials. These usually involve a larger group of participants. More people. Right. And the focus shifts more intensely towards evaluating how well the therapy actually works, its efficacy, while still keeping a very close eye on safety in this bigger group. And phase three is kind of the big one, the final stage before maybe getting approval. 
Exactly. Phase three trials are typically large scale studies. They aim to really confirm the therapy's effectiveness across a broad range of patients. Mm -hmm. They also monitor for any less common side effects that might only show up when you test it in thousands of people. And often they compare the new therapy directly against the current standard treatments. Good results from phase three are usually essential for the FDA to really consider approval. Okay, and finally, Assuming all those phases go well, what's the very last step in getting AGT-103T or any new drug to the people who need it? Right. If those phase three trials show positive results demonstrating the benefit outweighs the risk the company developing the therapy submits what's called a new drug application, or NDA, to the FDA. Yeah, this is a massive submission. It includes pretty much all the data collected throughout all the preclinical and clinical trial phases. The FDA then does this incredibly thorough review of the entire NDA. Weighing everything up. Precisely. Carefully weighing the potential benefits against any identified risks. And if the FDA concludes that the benefits do outweigh the risks for the intended population, they grant approval. That's what allows the therapy to finally be marketed and made available to patients. Wow, that is quite a journey. Thanks for breaking down that FDA process so clearly. Yeah. So based on where AGT-103T is right now, planning for Phase 1B, What's a sort of estimated timeline we might be looking at for potential FDA approval, mm. keeping in mind its estimates? Well, yeah, exactly. These are definitely estimations. As we said, the Phase 1B trial is expected to get going sometime in 2024. If that phase progresses smoothly, shows good signs, then Phase 2 trials could potentially start maybe in 2025. Okay. Then, assuming positive outcomes from Phase 2, Phase 3 trials might commence perhaps around 2026. So a few years out still for Phase 3. Potentially, yes. Now, it's really, really important to stress that these are projections. The actual timeline can and often does vary a lot depending on the results they get at each stage. Things can get delayed or sometimes accelerated if results are exceptionally strong. Yeah. But if all the phases continue to show favorable results, FDA approval could potentially be a reality once all that research is fully completed and reviewed. So while there isn't like a specific date we can circle on the calendar yet, the development is moving forward through these necessary rigorous stages. That's absolutely correct. It's a systematic process. It has to be to ensure both safety and efficacy before it becomes widely available. Okay. Let's focus back on the present and maybe the near future then. We know AGT-103T showed a good safety profile in Phase 1A. Were there any other encouraging signs that researchers observed early on? Yes, definitely. Beyond that favorable safety data, the early findings did indicate some uh, promising signs of enhanced immune responses in the individuals who took part in the trial. Okay, so the immune system seemed to be reacting positively. It seems so, yes. And researchers also observed evidence that the genetically modified T cells, the therapy cells, are actually persisting, sticking around in the patient systems for extended periods. Oh, that's key, isn't it? They need to last. It's very encouraging, yes. For the potential for a long-lasting therapeutic effect, you don't want them to just disappear quickly. And this persistence has been noted in scientific publications, backing it up. The fact that these modified cells seem to be sticking around and potentially doing their job long term. Yeah. That sounds very positive indeed. You mentioned the upcoming Phase 1B trial is particularly important. Why is that specific step so key right now? Well, the Phase 1B trial is really crucial because it's expected to provide much more detailed information about the therapy's efficacy. You know, how well does it actually work to control HIV in a slightly larger group of people compared to Phase 1A? Right. Moving beyond just safety. Exactly. And it will also help researchers better understand the optimal dosage, how much of the therapy is needed to get the best effect with minimal side effects. The results from this Phase 1B trial will be really influential in shaping how they design and run the bigger, later stage Phase 2 and 3 trials. Got it. It sets the stage for what comes next. So, okay, let's bring this back to our listeners, many of whom are living with HIV. What does all of this research into HET-103T mean for them right now and looking forward? What's the potential impact here? Well, I think the most significant potential impact is that possibility we talked about achieving a functional cure. The big goal. Right. AGT-103T offers the hope, at least, of long-term HIV remission without needing daily antiretroviral therapy. And that, well, that could significantly improve the quality of life for many individuals. How so? By reducing that daily burden of taking meditation, remembering doses, potential side effects, pharmacy visits, all of that. Yeah, the prospect of potentially stepping away from daily medication. I can imagine that's a really powerful motivator for many people. What advice would you give to someone listening right now who's interested in this type of therapy, maybe wants to learn more? 
That's a great question. For individuals living with HIV who are interested in learning more about EGT-103T, or maybe even thinking about potentially participating in future clinical trials, the most important first step is always to talk to their own healthcare provider. Start with your doctor. Absolutely. They can offer personalized guidance based on your specific health situation. They'll have, or can get, the most up-to-date information about ongoing and upcoming trials in your area and whether you might be eligible. Okay. It's also a really good idea to keep an eye on official clinical trial registries online, like clinicaltrials.gov. These websites provide comprehensive information about studies that are actively recruiting participants. Good resources to know. This is definitely an area to watch very closely then. AGT-103T really does seem like a significant potential step forward in HIV treatment research. It truly represents a potentially transformative approach, doesn't it? Shifting the focus from just lifelong viral suppression, which RT does incredibly well. Yeah, RT is amazing, but... But shifting towards the possibility of the immune system regaining long-term control itself, that's a different paradigm. And for you, our listener, as part of the HIV RNA test guide community, staying informed about the progress of these clinical trials and those mm -hmm. you know critical fda approval timelines is just so vital absolutely because knowledge empowers you it helps you have informed discussions with your healthcare providers and really understand the evolving landscape of hiv treatment options new things are always coming down the pipeline so true for the very latest updates on hiv research advancements in testing and remember with those 4500 plus testing labs across the us the hiv rna test guide podcast is always Always here is your trusted source and emerging therapies like AGT 103T. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel, HIV RNA Test Guide. Yeah, definitely stay tuned. You know, the development of AGT 103T really highlights the incredible potential of gene therapy, not just for HIV, but maybe other areas too. It makes you wonder what other aspects of HIV treatment do you think could benefit from similar innovative strategies? And maybe what questions does this deep dive into AGT 103T raise for you about? what the future might hold for those living with HIV. Something to think about. Mm -hmm.